So you could see how, how even though we weren't aware of it, that we had all been traumatized by that day because, because of the way it happened and because of the enormity of what had happened. And it's what sets Bloody Sunday out apart from everything else. It was a day that by deliberate political strategy, the British government decided to kill innocent civilians. Mm -hmm. and so, and that, and people didn't believe you, but you saw it with your eyes, so you knew that's what happened. And on that day, we had all come down marching down the hill, and it wasn't so much marching, it's a big steep hill, so the, the steepness of the hill carries you down it. So the people who are fittest get run into the front, and the people who are least fit try to keep their footing to keep up with the march. So you're kind of at a, a, a pace down the hill, and as we came towards, because uh, we were going to go to the Guildhall Square, and we're coming down that street, that that road was blocked, but the plan was then to turn, turn and go to Free Derry Corner. And I was kind of, because uh, I always used to, you'd be hopped up to you'd be at the front, but because I walked slower than everybody else, by the time you'd get to where you're going, I'd be at the back. Yeah. And then I'd be gossiping along the road. and. So they came back for me, I was only halfway down the hill, to say they needed me on the lorry at the front with the loud hailer to pull the crowd to Free Derry Corner, so that's what I did. And we had got the most of the crowd, now there'd be bits of rioting starting at the flashpoint where we weren't allowed to proceed, but we had got over to Free Derry Corner and I was standing on a platform. Now, I don't care what anybody says, I was higher than anybody else. Everybody else is on the ground. Yeah. I'm on the back of a lorry, so I'm up above them. And I know that the first shot I heard, I can he still hear it. I'm standing there on a lorry, looking down like I'm looking down on these people. And somewhere here, I only heard it in my left ear, but somewhere there, mm -hmm. there was one single shot, and I heard it. And the only place it could have come from was the walls. And when they put all the saddle stuff together, the only people up there were the soldiers. And that first single shot, I know, came from there. And the Lord Saddle said, I imagined it or I was confused or whatever he thought I was doing I was not one single shot started the dairy firing and when that shot went off the next shots I heard of came from there mm -hmm. and I actually heard myself saying don't you know, because that was only one shot and this was a burst of shots. And people got panicking. I said, Do you just see them getting down? I said, and I started to say, stand your ground and don't run. They're only firing over our heads. Yeah. Because, it, because again, a bit like the 5th of October, the idea that they would not be firing over your head, that they'd be firing into the crowd to shoot people. Was, was unthinkable. But the words were only halfway out of my mouth when I could see down the back that right at the back people were beginning to scatter and crouch down. I could just see people almost like a wave and people who were, you, know, you see people's faces looking up at you now they're all, but it's from the back and people are crouching and starting to run away and there's more fire. So it's a very funny feeling, but almost as if the first words are coming out of my mouth, 
my brain is trying to get them back in because I'm telling the people not to run. Yeah. And when they're halfway out of my mouth, I am now telling them to stay down and stay crouched down so that the soldiers don't think they're standing up. So I'm saying, don't run. They're only firing over our heads. And then I'm saying, get down, stay down, and get clear away to save a day. And that's taken just them few minutes that I'm telling you now. And I'm seeing people run away. And then I have this sense and realization I'm still standing on the back of a lorry. Mm -hmm. And people, the place is nearly clear. And then the penny drops with me. Are you going to stand here? I, I stand here, I'd be shocked too. And I get down under the lorry, but I still have the mic in my hand. It all happen, happens that quick. I'm holding a microphone and I'm saying don't run, do you run and then I'm under the lorry myself and I'm sitting at the, sitting underneath the wheel of it and by this time the place has cleared and I'm looking down that street and I can't really see because you're just seeing the whole way down and I still have the mic and I see people who don't seem to have moved away down there and I'm saying don't be afraid but you crawl away and then I realise they can't. Yeah. Can't. Um, and one of the things that came out of that were, uh, that was incredibly frustrating is you, you tried to take that story to Westminster. Yeah. Which resulted in you slapping Reginald Maldon. <laughs> exactly. And people remember that, you know, what you say, which is right. Uh, you know, the, and I didn't hit him hard enough. 